this is Rock Talk, and I'm excited to be talking to Rockies pitcher LaTroy Hawkins today. LaTroy, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Allie. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. It's good to see you. Where are you during this offseason? I am the great in the great state of Texas. Colorado second, though, but Texas number one. <gasps> so what has your off-season training been like in the great state of Texas? Uh, my off-season season training, you know, I've switched it up over the years. This year I'm doing more TRX machine in my house, whereas everything I'm doing is pretty much body weight. Doing a lot of agility stuff uh, to get my old bones and my joints moving around. Um, got a new trainer, Brandon McIntosh. He actually worked in the clubhouse in 07, the year we went to the World Series there. And he left there and went on to be a, a trainer and nutritionist. So he's here uh, training, training me and training with me. So that's that's a lot of fun. I have Sam Freeman, a left-hand pitcher for the um, um, St. Louis Cardinals. He's working out all, as well. He lives about 25 minutes away, and he's he comes to the house and works out with me in the morning. So health has obviously worked out for you. Just made your thousandth appearance this past season. Can you take me through that game? Whew, the Dodgers, uh, September 27th. Uh, who did I face? Darren Barney, I think. Yeah, it was Barney. Um, you know what, I had talked about it during the week with, with Walt about, you know, when and where I was going to get it. And he um, you know, he just assured me I would get it. I would definitely wouldn't pitch on the last day. So that was pretty cool. He would make sure I got it before the last day. And um, just going out there and, you know, taking it all in and and being able to, to be relied upon to go out there a thousand thousand times in a major league mm -hmm. uniform in a, in a thousand games, you know, can't many people say that they've done that. And some of the people that are on that list um, that I passed up and some of the guys are in front of me, you know, a lot of Hall of Famers and just to have my name up there with, with those guys is, you know, is, you know, pretty much, you know, what I've always dreamed of and, you know, worked for. And, you know, I never thought going in that I'll actually pitch in a thousand games. But, you know, once you get into it, you know, you start looking at the numbers and saying, you know what, I got a chance to get, you know, 800. You know, whoa, I got a chance to get 900. So after I got to 900 and, you know what, I'm going to shoot 4,000. And, you know, I was blessed enough to be able to get it last year. And I told Walt, I was like, I want to get 1,000 before the season over with. I don't want <laughs> – if I get hit by a bus – I want one zero 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 <laughs> next to Hawk's name in the record books. <laughs> so we made sure we got there. But you know, I was I was relieved to get it over with. You know, my family was happy, my teammates, and and a lot of and things like that ain't, is definitely not possible without you know great managers, you know teammates, and to hear Vince Scully talk about me afterwards when I went and looked at the tape was you know it made me feel pretty good. It made me feel pretty good. Definitely. Well, it was a memory for us all here at Coors Field and always will be. And a lot of the players have talked about just your leadership in the clubhouse. Is there any advice you've been given in these past 20 seasons that you've passed along to the younger guys? Um, just with myself, I've always said if you walk, to, if you talk to talk, you got to walk to walk. You got to lead by example. And I and I and I learned that from from Kirby Puckett and um, Bob Tewksbury and. Rick Aguilera and Eddie Guardado, you know, some of the guys I played with early in my career, they had a, a, a huge – Mike Jackson, the guys that had a huge influence on me, and it was all about if you're going to talk to talk, you got to walk to walk. And they always told me about being prepared. You know, prior proper planning prevents poor performance. And I always wanted to be prepared. I wanted to always be on time, and I wanted to be one of those guys that a manager can always count on to do the job, you know, sometimes it's not going to go your way, but I've always wanted to be that guy that, you know, to be able to pitch in, in those tight situations and, and uh, just have, the, you know, everybody in the organizations, you know, support behind you. In regards to that talk to the talk, walk the walk, um, something I really admire in you is the community service that you do here at the Rockies, but I know you've done throughout your entire career. Is there a favorite community service event or activity you've done um, within these 20 seasons? You know what, I've done so many, um, you know, reach, uh, every city I'm in, I always um, reach out and, and go out and help in the community. I always said it's easy to write a check. I think it takes, I think it has a lasting impact when you go out and get your hands dirty 
and you walk in and you're a soldier out there helping people. And I think that's that that right there is more gratifying to me than being able to write a check. I can write a check, that's fine, but giving my time, that was always important. And and I and I learned that, you know, from my grandmother. My grandmother, she passed away in two thousand six. But I'll never forget going to her house and she was always into helping people. There's one thing about my grandmother, you can always go to her house and get food. You can always go eat. You probably couldn't spend a night, but you can always get, you know, stay there for a little bit, you know, get a good meal and be on your way. And I was sitting in the kitchen talking to her and I had my back was her back was to the to the door. And she said she was talking to me about, you know, about baseball because she was my biggest fan. And I see this little white kid in Gary, Indiana, walk in the house, go in the refrigerator, get something out, and leave out. And I'm like, Grandma, who is that? She said, oh, those are our neighbors across the alley. And I'm like, really? Why is he going to your, the little kid going to your refrigerator? She said, well, baby, as I taught you, everybody needs a little help every now and then. So don't ever forget that. Don't ever lose sight of that. I don't care where you at in life. You're always going to need some help. And if you're nice to people, you know, people will help you. And keep that on your heart. And I was like, wow. I'm like, Okay, Grandma, I get it. I get it. So that's, I think that right there was instilled in me in helping people and, and giving back to my community. And when I was in San Francisco, I had a homeless friend named Mike <laughs> who I met, you know, just from walking because I live across the street from the ballpark, walking back and forth from the game and to, and, and to work. And he always stopped to talk to me. So, I, you know, the first couple of times I was a little hesitant talking to him. But then, you know, you know, as the months go on, we started get, having deeper and deeper conversations. And, you know, he ended up being a, a very, very nice guy. He didn't do drugs, didn't drink. He told me a story. He had a college degree. And, you know, we became friends. You know, my son used to walk over about 5 or 4 o'clock before BP. You know, Mike used to meet him at the, at the, at the light, stoplight, and help him across the street. You know, sometimes when I was flying home on an off day, he would have a taxi ready for me after the game, you know, so I can get in the taxi and get to SFO you know, as quickly as possible. So, you know, I've seen him over the years uh, going back to San Francisco. I didn't see him this year, and I hope he's okay. But, you know, just things like that. You know, I, had, I he, he took his time out to get to know me, and I took my time to get to know him, and a friendship developed. I remember you telling me that story. It's definitely one of my favorites. And talking about the community service and just your participation in Major League Baseball in general, you um, participated in the International Elite Camp in Brazil, for Major League Baseball this past offseason. Can you tell me about that and how you were chosen to participate? Well, I was on the trip in 2011, the MLB All-Stars. We went to Taiwan to play. And we were there for 11 days. And I, and I wanted to see how MLB put, this, put it together, you know, coordinating with another country, you know, getting the fields up to par, you know, logistics and everything. And so I spent a lot of time talking with the with the with the uh, the people that were there from MLB and there was MLB International. And she told me, she said, you know what, you should come in and offers and 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 hear our spiel on what we're trying to do globally to grow the game of baseball. So just so happened, I ended up playing there in 2013. And you know, I called her up and I and she's like, well, you can come up anytime. So I went up and had a chat with the guys and they told me what they were doing and I. I told him that I was interested in, in helping in any any capacity. And, you know, he told me the programs that they were doing and, you know, where I wanted to go and, you know, who who the people I would be working with. And, you know, I told him, I was like, you know what, I'm not picky. Why don't you pick where you think my, my services are most needed? And Mike McClellan is his name, MLB International. He picked Brazil. And... And what that is, Brazil has, you know, Brazil is a huge soccer country. We all get that. But there have, everybody can't play soccer. And they have some great athletes over there. So baseball's in their, in their culture. And we're there to develop that baseball in them and spread baseball around the country of Brazil so they can get more players coming out there, out of, the, out of Brazil. I mean, we have uh, Jan Gomes, the catcher for the Cleveland Indians, and Rianzo, he just got traded to Florida. He's the pitcher for the uh, White Sox. So they have some talent. They've had, I think we've had like nine guys drafted, I mean, signed out of the camp. So, I mean, it's going pretty good. Um, I think our major challenge is to get, you know, get those guys playing. They have to play. It's not, baseball is not a huge sport. We just had a huge endorsement one of the soccer clubs actually building baseball fields on their, on their facility, next to their facilities. And they're going to host, you know, 
um, camps and stuff so kids can start playing baseball as well, especially the kids that aren't playing soccer. And I think that's a huge, huge step in the right direction because, as we know, soccer dominates Brazil. Definitely. And the last or last couple of weeks, you announced that you're going to be retiring after this 2015 season. Is there anything specific you're looking to do once you retire? Uh, I don't want to minimize what, what my, my options and my possibilities are, but I would love to see the game from a different angle. Mm -hmm. um, special assistance to the GM. Uh, I, want, I would like to – I want to see that. I want to see how the teams are put together, the strategy that goes behind everything. Um, do I want to be on the field? Actually, no, I don't. At this point in time, I don't. Maybe a year away from being on the field, you know, I could change that. You know, I could, you know, TV, uh, radio. I prefer radio because you get to, you know, have a little bit more leniency of what you get to say on the radio. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I just keep my options open, and hopefully, somebody, you know, look at Latroy and be like, you know what, I want, you know, I want to groom you to be a GM one day, and that would be, that would be, that would be a dream come true. So this next part is called Fat Five. So outside of Colorado, or actually, you know what, I'm going to reword that one. Outside of Colorado and Texas, where would you live? Oh, Colorado and Texas, I would like to live in London. Twitter or Instagram? Instagram. If you could go to any world or any event outside of baseball, sporting event, what would it be? Uh, I would like to go to the World Cup and Olympics. Bikram Yoga or long distance running? Bikram yoga. <laughs> yoga by far. <laughs> did you do that during your vegan diet time? I sure did. I did a lot of that with uh, Jose Moda, who does uh, radio or well, TV for the Angels. He's a, he's a master yoga guy. So I did a lot of that on the road with him. Cool. And then would you rather catch a porcupine or a skunk that was thrown out of a two-story window? Oh, skunk by far. <laughs> really? Even if it sprays you? Oh, he's going to spray me. But you know what? <laughs> I quarantined myself for about a week. <laughs> those porcupines, though. Ooh, man. Yeah. Those I are think that pain is going to last a lot longer than that smell. <laughs> I agree with you. And I live in the country. I smell skunks all the time. My dogs get sprayed all the time. Thank you so much, LaTroy, for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you. Everyone, that was LaTroy Hawkins. I'm your host, Allie Sturm, and this was the latest edition of Rock Talk.